hey guys first of all i want to say a big humongous thank you so much um for all the love that i have received on my first youtube video that i posted and it was just incredible the response and i'm reading every comment and i'm just engaging um as much as i can and i'm just so excited about this journey and i just know that it's just amazing and um, today i'm going to be talking about my academic journey and i have a lot of questions about that I'm going to try and make this video about two things, my academic journey and then also how I became a professor and why I became a professor or a lecturer um, and how that's going for me. Um, so, yeah, that's what this video is about. Let's go. <laughs> people can like watch such a great video right and um there'll be that like one trailing person you know one trailing ant <laughs> that wants to kind of say a negative thing or whatever but i mean that's just it, it is the business of it isn't it the business of social media is that you're opening yourself up and there are people who appreciate that and want to learn and want to engage and there are people who want to pick it apart and that's okay but anyways today we are here and today we're talking about something um, really special um, to me. And um, today I'm going to be talking about my academic journey. And I have a lot of questions about that. I'm going to try and make this video about two things, my academic journey and then also how I became a professor and why I became a professor or a lecturer um, and how that's going for me. So this story, I've got to take it real back and it's, so wild that my whole academic journey centers around this person and i'm gonna get emotional already like i'm already crying <laughs> um my academic journey centers around my mother both my parents in fact played very key roles in my education but specifically my mom and so as the story unfolds you'll see what a key role she has played throughout this journey and I know that academics aren't an important part of your career, but for me they are because I am in academia. And that's why this um, video is important. So let's take it way, way back. Um, I, you guys know, I'm from Hammersdale and um, that's where I grew up. So I grew up in Hammersdale and then, you know, the whole thing was happening um, back in the day where now our parents were trying to move out of the hood and they're trying to move into the burbs. Um, and this was now in the early 90s. So I was born in 89. And so I think when I was about to go to high school, that's when we were making that move to the burbs. Um, and that's what happened. My parents are two educated individuals. My mother desperately wanted to be a doctor um, when she was growing up, but things didn't work out that way. She ended up you know, studying science, but ended up being a teacher and a lecturer herself. So you see already like the correlation there. My, ma my father, on the other hand, studied social work and he is the founder of Power of God Assemblies. He's the bishop and the founder of that church and has been in ministry for decades now. Um, so my dad is also a key part of the story because me being called into ministry has followed much in his footsteps and also my, my mother's footsteps. Um, and, how, and I will talk in another video of how that completely like bamboozled me uh, it wasn't my goal to be a pastor but how that bamboozled me um, and still bamboozles me even till today um but that um part of my life is so special and um i see how much god has been at work in that particular space and how i'm charting my own way in ministry and i and god is revealing to me where he wants me to be and where he wants to see me and how he wants to see me grow in this space um, and how he wants my reach to be um so yeah so my parents are educated people who education was key for them my dad's life story is incredible my life my mom's life story is incredible and hope to share that with you guys one day and hopefully i'll be able to interview them their key was education their key to being anything was education and for so for them um for us growing up um it had to be that, you know what I mean? They had to instill that importance and relevance of education in our lives 
in order for us to to be something you know in life that's all they could give us they didn't have massive savings they didn't have lots of money all they could pass down to us was the importance of education and how it would open doors for us in the future my parents was sent us to a private school in primary school at some point they couldn't afford it and so had to separate us so i remember zipo um and so there were lots of questions by the way about zipo zipo zekosi so dr zipo zekosi is my sister and she comes after me um we are one year six months and six days apart and she's my best friend but she will come into the story a lot because she's also such a huge influence and she's also been put on this earth to be my 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 spiritual guide she is the wisdom behind me. and god has put her specifically in my life to give me that wisdom that comes from above so i lean on her so much for that guidance she's an incredible human being and god has really gifted her in um in in wisdom and also in prophecy um but yeah we will get to that so zippo and i growing up very close and then the young one was coming up ayanda and my parents like no my parents and they sent us to a private school in primary school they didn't have the money for this but they were like you know what we want the best for our kids and this is what looks like is the best and so that's what we're going to do we're going to send our kids to a private school and it was a christian school um i'm going to mention school names and scholarships i've been on for awareness and also i feel like it's not just name dropping for me it's um also putting out there like maybe you could be interested in a scholarship like this right or um in this in a university like this and so that's important and hopefully the schools that i've been to are proud of me and proud of the woman that i've become and so it would be you know win-win situation anyways so we went to mcs marisburg christian school and then at some point my parents were struggling with the school fees there and my mom tells the story so amazingly because um she was struggling with school fees at mcs and this was like a mild private school <laughs> and then I remember when I was, it was time for me to go to high school. It was like a natural progression for me to go to, you know, a public school. I was like, you know, that's what we're going to go. That's what we can afford. My mom was like, you know what? Um, and when I talk about crazy faith, this is where I get it from. It's this woman. She's crazy. She said to me, Tando, actually apply to Epworth. We're gonna, I'm going to apply for you, my baby girl. You're going to Epworth. I had never even heard of that before. It was, it was Epworth Independent High School for Girls. I'm like... And I'm looking at this place. This place is fancy and like there's no way we can afford this. The funny story is that the, the finance officer at the primary school, <laughs> right, where my mom and my dad were struggling with school fees there and they were getting red letters every month, saw my mom and dad two, three years later at Epworth. And they were like, are these two people crazy? You could hardly afford the school fees at MCS. And now you are out here at Epworth. <laughs> and my parents just they tell that story so well because to them it was like this is where our faith was we were just like we don't care and they put everything on the line listen for my parents to take us to school our, i ended up getting a scholarship to epworth it was an, an academic scholarship and that's where my mom's crazy faith comes in because she said go to go apply to epworth um but she was saying go apply we'll see what we're gonna do and then god said actually i'm gonna make sure that this these girls go to the school and i got a scholarship to go to Epworth. and so my mom didn't know that, that where there was even a scholarship and i got it and then after that for my sisters to come in there was another special scholarship that they had because it was a methodist school where if your parents were pastors you could get certain percentages off school fees so just god was just i work in it and had his hand had, had his hands all over it the whole time um geez there's so much to speak about here because also, my sister, her own journey is just incredible, but she will share that on her own. Anyways, <laughs> we're here, and um, now I've gotten a scholarship to go to Epworth. And um, my parents at the time sacrificed, I remember them sacrificing everything. If I remember correctly, my parents sold their house. And we downgraded cars at some point. I remember at some point, the family only had one car, and what was going to call, guys? um and it was just a lot but when you're a child you know the novelty of things really overpowers the reality of things there was just a lot going on and i just knew that i had this mandate on me to work hard and i did i tried my best and that's who i was going to be i was going to be the best and that's what 
I, that's the mentality I went into high school with. And so I got to high school and my parents had to sacrifice so much. Even though I was on a scholarship, we still couldn't afford the school fees there. Fast forward, you know, I was, I had an amazing time in high school. Um, they, they, there were some things that I learned so much about myself, of course, you know, how high school is. And it really set um, me up for the future to look into the future and say, okay, cool, what is out there for me? Now it's time for me to go to university and I'm super excited and I'm super prepared. Now, people, if you have somebody who's in high school and they are looking to go to university in South Africa and they're preparing themselves, they must tune in right now because South African universities are very competitive, you know? And so to give yourself a shot, you need to be looking like the best, if you, even if you're not the best. Prepare yourself. Do your things on time. I had a file, I remember, in grade 11 where I had put in the different, at that time, we used to apply by paper. So, you, you know, you put your application form and you write it out. I had my application forms to every university I wanted to go to. I had the bursaries lined up in the flip file and I was there just to organize, you know. And that really set me up for my future. I wanted to go to UCT and I got accepted. Then I got a scholarship to go to UCT and I was like, this is it, I'm on the way. I applied to do construction studies. I'll tell you what, it's funny that, you know, the exposure that, you know, a child will get is either from you or from themselves. You know, you can still send them to a really great school, but the work of, in, of inspiring that child, the work of, um of building that you know that shine in that child really is still the onus is still on you as a parent you know um i didn't know about architecture can you believe it i mean i had i had heard about it but i i didn't really associate it with, it with myself so my choice was okay i'm going to do construction studies and that's what i did i started off with construction studies at um in at uct got there fun times Literally, I remember in at UCT, the in one building, one half was construction studies, the other half was architecture. And when you are standing there on the like patio of construction studies, you can see all the architecture kids like sitting and chilling in their patio. I remember looking over there and be like, "Hi, man!" <laughs> I'm looking at them. And I'm like, "Those are my people." Like just the way they were, I was like, "No, man." I think that's where I'm supposed to be. And I remember walking into the architecture building and being like, what? People do this for a living. Always. I was completely inspired and bulldozed by art. You know, juxtaposed by logic and making art into logic. And I was like, this is where I need to be. And so... And that's what I'm saying. Things don't go perfectly for me. And that's what I said in the other video. That year, after my first year, I had already applied to go and change my degree to architecture. And this was at a huge risk because I was going to forfeit my scholarship. But I was willing to because I was so determined. And I knew that that's just what I wanted to do. And I'm getting emotional right now because architecture... <laughs> I found myself there and being able to express myself in the way that I was able to in that degree. That degree took so long for me to do, but I was supposed to be there for that long and I was supposed to be doing what I was doing. Um, and I'm so glad I made that change. Architecture is still such a, a, a strong kind of, um, fishing line, you know, in my life and in my career. Although, what you'll find later on is that I discovered that there was even more than that. But discovering architecture was like discovering myself. And I was like, wow, I can be great. I can be awesome one day. And that's one, one thing I don't regret. It took me a long time to finish the architecture degree, but it's one thing I don't regret. I'm now at UCT doing architecture, and this was just the coolest thing. And I felt super privileged, and we were there. Hey, man, I was a kid. And remember now, a couple of years in here, this part of my life is where I 
fall pregnant. And after falling pregnant, I then come back to UCT to keep going. And just my mental health at the time, I remember also my child fell ill whilst, whilst I was away. And just things became very difficult for me. And I eventually got um, excluded um, academically. But I was there for, I think, six years. Um, and it was just a really tough time. I remember coming back home and just being like, I have nothing. <laughs> I literally still have a matric certificate after seven years after matric. Young person, I need to zoom into myself for this. Can you believe that? I went to UCT and after six, seven years, all I had to show for it was still a matric certificate. But look at where I am now. How you start and where you are is no indication of where you're going to be. It is it's not saying anything about what you could achieve one day. That is blowing my mind right now. My own testimony is blowing my mind. I can't. And so um, I remember my mother at the time, we went to go see my cousin, Utule. Utule had a baby and me and my mom went to go see her. And I had just come back from UCT and I was academically excluded. Went to go check on her and I said it out loud for the first time. I said, my time at UCT is over. Um, and my mom held me and she was like, you're going to be fine. I could see the disappointment in her face, but she held me and she said, you're going to be fine. Don't you worry about it. And I remember my cousin Tule also comforting me at that time. See, I can't. Like, I'm already crying. <laughs> and it was tough, you know. Um, it was really, really tough. I was just like there because I didn't really know what like the next step was for me I had like half a degree of architecture a really great matric and massive dreams but I didn't really know what the next step was for me child when I tell you if I didn't know if I was going in or out hey and my mom and my dad were right there with me they were driving me to places I was trying to see what I'm going to do I, I didn't know what I was going to do Every single time there's been a breakthrough in my life, it was my mother speaking to my life and saying, hey, why don't you do this? And then I do it and then it happens. Let me show you how. I'm there stressing out. Um, child, I even was, you know, at a call center. And because um, I needed a job, I needed to do something. I needed to get busy. And at the call center, <laughs> they were like, oh, you're overqualified. And like, you can come and work, but like, we don't suggest it. So I was just like, what am I going to do, you know? And my mom was like, Tando, why don't you finish your architecture degree? And I'm like, I would, but I was excluded. She was like, at another architecture school. I'm like, where? And she's like, you kiss it in. It's right here. And I'm like, why didn't I think of this? <laughs> University of KwaZulu Natal. Oh my goodness, that place has my heart. Not only did I go there and get into the architecture program and finish off my, off my degree and I finished it off strong, but years later, I ended up teaching there and lecturing over there. Um, and so UKZN has my heart. And so when I was there, um, I was there for two years and ended up finishing my architecture degree and I was just so happy. Um, and met incredible people that I'm still <coughs> with and who are still in my life till now. Um, graduated from UK to the end, and then again, <laughs> I'm sitting and I'm going, you know what? Like right now, my inclination isn't to go to a firm and work. I just didn't have that push. And one thing about me is. I must really be convicted to do something. And I just didn't have that conviction 
that the next best thing for me now that I have my architecture degree is to go work in an architectural firm, funny enough. So I sat around after that year, after graduating, and I was like, what to do, what to do, you know? And I got a phone call. And the phone call was from CSIR, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, or was it the Center for Scientific and Industrial Research? I don't really know how the conversation went, but basically the gist of it was, we have a scholarship for you. Do you want to study further? <laughs> and I'm like, what? And this was in January now, after I had graduated from my degree the year before. So I'm just like sitting there going, is this real? And they were like, if you'd like to study, you've got an anniversary now, so you can. So now this is scramble now. My parents were like, absolutely go for it. Studying further was like awesome. And this is what I wanted to do. I'm like, That's, that feels more like me, studying further. Um, but what to do? I can't get into an architecture program now. It's January, you apply like six months before. So I called a couple of universities and checked on, online to see what kind of degree I can do. I, I was looking for a postgraduate degree or an honors degree I could get into. And I check online at, at WITS and they have this postgraduate diploma in urban planning. And I'm like, hmm. And they're taking people from different built environment industries into this program to now I'm kind of integrate them into urban design and urban planning moving forward. And I'm like, okay, this could be an option. I give them a call, but like, hey, if you get here like tomorrow, we can fit you in. <laughs> Literally, guys, I had an old gadonk, a car, and uh, in my Skorokoro, I put in like, I literally packed everything into that car. Linen, my clothes, my shoes, <laughs> a pillow, Everything I could take, uh, one pot, one pan, a spoon. And I drove by myself ka, 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 la, 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 to Johannesburg from Durban, <laughs> six hours on my own. I think it was my first time actually driving on my own um, for such a long distance. Said bye to my parents. They were like, you go, girl, you know, call us when you get there. Like, you know, it was just a crazy time because I was also super young. I get there and... Um, Literally, the program was starting like two days. I get res. I tell them I've got a scholarship. I've got a letter here. They're like, sure, you have res now. I'm like, wow, this is great. And they're like, yeah, get into the program. You, you have a scholarship. You, you, we, 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 sure, come in. And I'm like, you know, these people called me like two days ago telling me that they're giving me money to come and study. Guys, 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 God, God. <laughs> I Jesus is impressive, I tell you. <laughs> hey, That's what happened. I was now a student doing a postgraduate diploma in urban planning. And this was the year that my mind opened. Now, architecture people, <laughs> maybe they'll understand or not understand. Let me tell you something about architecture. Those people are like lucrative people. Architects, well, in their minds, they are the star. You know what I mean? And that's what I knew. I knew that I was the architect and I'm the star. I'm the, I'm the principal agent, you know? And all, only to find that, no, man, my jurisdiction is to the window. You know, my jurisdiction maybe even be to the driveway. But urban planning gave me a bigger jurisdiction. And that jurisdiction was about the city. It was about the urban landscape and it was about the people. Urban planning gave me an insight into culture and how I can be a principal agent in learning from that, absorbing that, and then also redistributing that in a way that uplifts communities. And that blew my mind. Urban planning was my doorway into a world beyond the window, a world beyond the wall, a world beyond the door. And that's where architects remain and that's their dwelling is i mean maybe to the driveway you know and so people who are in the built environment industry might understand what i'm talking about right now you know but i'm just kind of jogging around and also that was the year where it was fees must fall and child you know i was in the in the front there <laughs> oh 
I was, in the, I was in the front there with Fees Must Fall. We were there, um, you know, running barefoot on the streets. Um, but just learning a lot as well about advocacy, which has been such a big part of my life even now. All right. So now I'm in the middle of my postgraduate, de postgraduate degree at WITS and I'm just having the time of my life. I'm enjoying myself. Went through a lot there, but, you know, came out strong and stronger. I remember at the time, I have this incredible friend of mine, Dineo Lioma. Look her up. She's an incredible young woman. And we had been friends since we were in matric. And we now met here. And she was doing her master's at the time. And, you know, we were talking. And we like to inspire each other and just put that fire under each other's bums, you know. <laughs> and I remember at the time, we were just like, what's next for us? And we were chatting. And I was like, girl, you know, I'm thinking of going, you know, to Oxford to go do my master's you could do that right now I mean you're in the middle of your master's right now but you could do another master's you know abroad and we were chatting and she was like you know I was thinking of this other program and at Cambridge I'm like you can do it you know look for a scholarship listen we were on it and she left halfway through her master's degree and she went to go do her um her master's at Cambridge when I went to go do my master's at Oxford Brooks she was the person who Onkanga, who received me um um that side she had been there now for half a year and she received me she's like let me show you the ropes girl because i've been here now you know incredible person who's just you know she's like a sister to me and she's family to me oh no i'm getting emotional again oh my goodness she's like a sister to me and we've always just oh i can't talk i'm just crying <laughs> um but she's a huge part of my journey as well. And um, she continues to inspire me every single day um, with the things that she's doing and she's achieving and just charting her way and carving, um, carving a space out for herself in the industry that she's in. Incredible. I'm gonna go cry now. Now, before I go over the seas, this is the in-between now. It's so strange. Right in between my honors degree and my master's degree is where the magic happened. I finished my honors degree, was waiting to do my master's degree in another year. Because the master's degree only finishes in September, only starts in September. And so there was this space in between from the end of my postgraduate diploma December to September and magic happened there. God did something in my life that was completely, it came from left and it changed my life forever. I go back home after vids. I got straight A's. Go back home and I'm like, what to do? I, I'm waiting to see if I get accepted at Oxford Brooks for a master's degree and also waiting to see if I'm going to get a scholarship for that. So those are things that are going to happen when the year is going to end. So what am I going to do right now? Me and my mom are sitting around, you know, and we're thinking about it, praying on it. And we're just coming together on it together, but just really in prayer about it. You know, when my mom says, let's agree on something, because if two or three agree, then you know. So we agreed, we're like, God, God will give us an idea of what I'm supposed to get up to now. Like, do I get a job? What happens? <clears throat> My mom says, Tando, why don't you go lecture? What? <laughs> Lecturing? It's blowing my mind right now. And I was like, wait a minute. That could be an option. I could go and lecture. And she says, yeah, you could. Who do you know that maybe would know if there's a post out there? But I think this could be something that you could explore right now. During my postgraduate diploma, I met a gentleman there who was in the same program, who was a lecturer back home at DUT, Durban University of Technology. So I give him a call and I'm like, yo, buddy, I'm looking to lecture maybe. I've never done it before, but here I am. 
do you think that could be an opportunity for me to do it in the architecture department at UT? Guess what he says? He says, Tando, we're literally looking for a black female lecturer who's looking to do her master's in the architecture department. What? And I'm like, listen, I'm your girl. I apply. Guys, I'm not even joking with you. Within less than, um, less than a month, I was lecturing at Durban University of Technology. And that was the moment that changed my life forever. When I started teaching, I realized I was made for this. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. I couldn't believe. And I used to say it all the time. And listen here, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, the, the pay wasn't bad. <laughs> I wasn't getting paid peanuts. And I was like, Lord, people get to do what I do all the time. And I remember doing it and being like, I get to do this every day, one, two, and then actually get paid. <laughs> it's unfair. I was having too much of a good time. I loved it so much. And I knew after that year that I was going to do this for the rest of my life in some way, form, capacity, forever. Whether it was part-time, full-time, whatever it was, but lecturing was my passion. And that's what I came on earth to do. And that's why I'm saying that God has such a way of working where the in-between can be defining and the in-between can be the catharsis that you need for forever. And so in between these two degrees, it was so important to me is where I actually found myself and it was incredible. And, and so that's how I got into lecturing. My mom was one who said, you could. I mean, I did it and you're my daughter. I know you could do it. I mean, you're fabulous because you're my daughter. <laughs> She's that kind of woman. And I'm just like, you're right. And I come from a long line of teachers as well. And so I don't know why this was like, you know, I didn't think of it. I will never stop teaching. Never, ever, ever. Not, not even if you paid me to stop. I would never. I love it. And I'm great at it. Um, I just love doing it. And it's just incredible that I get to do it. I feel so privileged to be able to educate. I feel so privileged to be able to um, be in that space where people are learning and growing. It's just incredible. So okay, yeah, I was at DUT. I call it dads. I was at dads and um, it was just an incredible time. A lot of things happened there, um, including triggering moments for me. I remember one student fell pregnant and I didn't see her in class. Um, I didn't know she was pregnant and you know I followed up to see where she's at you know um, to do what I needed when I was you know at UCT and I needed somebody to just follow, follow up and then that made hopefully a difference to her um, because she ended up coming back and, and, and graduating eventually even when I had left I wanted to be the lecturer I needed and representation matters and the fact that you can see somebody who looks like you. I mean, I could only wish for that. Imagine if I had a black female lecturer at UCT. I mean, I don't know where I would have ended up. I don't know if it would have been the same or not, but I can just imagine that, and that just sounds magical, right? So seeing somebody who looks like you, who might even be from the background that you come from, is here to tell you, I did it, you can. That's incredible, and that's what our generation needs. That's what our, that's what our kids need. That's what our communities need. They need representation in all industries so don't look down on representation and whenever you have an opportunity to advocate for it i hope you will i hope you will this is becoming such a long story right <laughs> maybe then i need a part two <laughs> i think i might need a part two y'all <laughs> so then i finish uh during that year as i'm teaching at dad's um, I'm waiting to hear if I got accepted at Oxford Brooks University to do my master's. And this was a very special program. This program was called Masters of, no, Master of Science in Urban Planning for Developing Countries and Transitional Regions. What? You can, you can learn that. You can do a master's in that. That's like totally up my alley. And I was so interested in formality 
because when I was doing my architecture degree at UKZN, we did projects in Warwick Junction, in Magete, and that's the space I wanted to work in. That if I was going to do any research, I wanted to be in informality. I wanted it to be in in um in the informal economy, in the grey economy as we call it, and am now actually here in California at Cal Poly teaching about informality, the gray economy and the informal economy and giving it to them in the perspective of cities of the South and cities of the South are cities of, that are in um, Africa. My master's program was then going to be focused around the informal economy and looking at sub-Saharan African countries and looking at their cities thereof and looking at the informal eco economy there. And that's what I ended up doing at, at, at Oxford Brooks. But that's a testimony in itself. How did I get to, mas to do masters in the UK at Oxford Brooks, one of the most awesome architecture schools in the world? And then how did I pay for it? Listen, I tell you that God, 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 so like, <laughs> hey. And my mother was like, let's agree. I remember just being this crazy person at home. Like, um, I just believed it in my heart, but I'm going to go to the UK. I'm going to go to Ox Oxford Brooks. I'm going to get that scholarship. They're going to pay for everything, even for flights. And um, it happened. I remember we were planning to go to, uh, at some point, we were planning for my dad's birthday for the end of the year. And they were like, maybe we should do it in November. And I was like, guys, don't. You can't do it in November. I won't be there. My sisters were like, where are you going to be? And I'm like, I'm going to be at, in the UK doing my master's. Oh, and that's like, thank you, thank Because they haven't got paid like Tando. Um, but I ended up going, you know what I mean? That's crazy faith. Like, if you're not gonna, if you, if, if what you're saying doesn't make people laugh at you <laughs> and you seem like a fool, you know, maybe it doesn't scare you, what is the point, right? What is the point? And so that was, that was me. I was going to the UK. And when I received that call about the scholarship, uh, oh, the interview process wasn't easy. Everything wasn't easy. The application wasn't easy. But I was like, I can do this. And one thing about me, I don't know if you're this person. I can send you my resume. I can fill in the application form of whatever. But, and I won't know what the outcome will be. But if you meet me, once you meet me, <laughs> there's no way. Like, you, you're you going to give me that opportunity, right? You're going to give me that opportunity because you got to feel the presence of God. you got to feel the glory. You know what I'm saying? I'm going into this interview room like and then I go into that room. I go into that meeting. Every single application I send, before I say I press submit or put it in the post box, submit. Mina, I'm I live in the spirit. Nothing, nothing of mine happens in the physical, happens in the material, happens because I've applied myself. No, 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 no. In the spirit, it's God that connects, you know? And for it to manifest in the physical. So it manifested in the physical and I left September. Um, I left to go and start my degree at Oxford Brooks in another country. Um, and I was there for just over a year. Got my master's, got great marks, uh, graduated with merit actually. And that was an incredible journey. Um, and it's just been incredible since. I lectured in Oxford at the Oxford Academy. Um, I was able to do uh, a summer school. There is a summer school there called the Oxford Academy. And I was able to do an architecture program there for a couple of months. So I got to lecture there as well. Um, and then when I got back, I lectured at UKZN um, ever since um, uh, then. And then, you know, moved on to being this side as well um, and lecturing here as well. So yeah, in my next video, I'm gonna share with you um, how I came to the USA and how the job that I have here came about. Also a testimony, like my whole life. You know in that song that says, my life is a testimony. You know, you know my life testifies about God. And so that's what I'm here to share with y'all. It hasn't been easy. And I think <laughs> in this next video that's going to come up, oh, that's where the, you know, some of the real stuff comes up. I've, I've, I've faced this year some real adult things and they haven't been easy, but here I am. 
bright you know but yeah there you go see you in the next video